morning, good morning, good morning, D-Squad family. Good morning, family. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Monday, 8.59. I'm running. Going to be a little bit late to therapy, but it's been raining out here, and we were under a flood warning. Um, so hopefully I don't get caught in none of this, because... Uh, where I live at, it floods, like especially in front of my house, which you guys probably seen in one of my videos where we had like a flood, like you, thank God we have a like an incline on our driveway or our cars would have been messed up, but that's not why I'm getting on here this morning. You know, it's been some things on my heart, guys, that I have been wanting to talk to you. I almost dropped the phone. Some things I have been wanting to talk to you guys about that maybe somebody can understand and relate to where I'm coming from when I talk about this message. This message is very delicate and sensitive to me um, because it's concerning and talking about um, something I'm going through in my personal life with one of my children. And, um, and I, as I was sitting on my porch yesterday and I, I always sit on the porch and I pray and I worship and I talk to God and you know, I just I just have to take my situations and problems to God and just lay them at his feet. But how many of you know sometimes we just don't leave them there? We don't just leave them at his feet. We take them to his feet. But before we get away from his feet, we done took them right back. You know, we go back and we take it right back. We don't even completely leave it there. And that's what I have been doing. I have been doing that dealing with one of my children. And as I was sitting on the porch yesterday morning... Um, I know it was nothing but the Spirit of the Lord had just reminded me of a situation in the Bible that was similar to my situation. And if any of you know about this, and if any of you read your word, or if any of you ever heard of the prodigal son, yeah, that story. Well, I that story relates to my situation with a, my daughter, one of my daughters. I call her the prodigal daughter. Amen. I call her the prodigal daughter. And some of you may ask, why do you call her the prodigal daughter? And if you read in Luke, I believe it was Luke chapter, uh, I don't even want to get it wrong, but I'll put it down here on the screen. Uh, but if you read that story, read it. Make sure you read it so you can understand where I'm coming from. Concerning the prodigal, why I call my daughter the prodigal daughter. Because of some of the things that the prodigal son did is just like what my daughter has done and is doing so guys i'm going to go ahead and go into therapy and i'm going to come back and continue this conversation with you all and i want your feedback too and let me know that you can relate where i'm coming from all right so i'm going to see you in a little bit as you guys can see and it's probably going to be my last time but not sure but anyway we'll continue our conversation in the car got to put my thrive on all right guys i'm out of therapy just got back in the car i want to finish this conversation before i get back home because i got grandbaby at home and i know i ain't gonna be able to really talk to you guys but yeah like i was saying if you read about it and some of you may have heard about the prodigal son that story if you would just if you're going through an experience like that, then that story will help you and it will give you some hope. Because I read it last night and I cried reading it, but there's hope. You know, there is some hope. God gives us hope. And I have hope. And I'm just believing that in the midst of this season of my life, with, with you know, going through with my daughter, I know that there is hope at the end of the tunnel. And I'll just kind of recap about the prodigal son. Um, there, was, there was a man who had two sons. And one the younger son, and my daughter is the younger daughter, the younger son wanted his inheritance. He wanted his money. He wanted to what his dad had for him he wanted it so his dad gave him he you know his dad gave him his his finances and when he got his finances in the bible it says he went and he scoundled his money off with harlots which are prostitutes and you know while living you know he 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 started just and he was spinning you know but then when he got broke uh the bible says a famine hit the whole land and when and in and famine means that food ran out if you didn't have money to get food, you wasn't going to eat. You know, if you didn't have money to a place to stay, you was outdoors. 
And and you know, right now, this same situation happened with my daughter. When my daughter was a young girl, uh, and she was in daycare, she was actually beaten. She was beaten in a daycare when she was four years old. And of course, I filed a lawsuit against them and won. And um, when your child is so young, they put it in a trust fund. Well, she turned 18 and she received her, her money. And when she got her money, of course, she left home and went out of town. And she spent all she had. She enjoyed herself. She did whatever she had to do. But then a famine hit the land that she was in. And it doesn't mean it hit the city or whatever, it hit her. You know, you ain't got no money. You know, when you got money, everybody's your friend. Everybody's around you. Everybody, you know, this and that. But when you ain't got no money, people, how many know people disappear? People don't want to help you. She had a famine moment. And so she got to the point where I was still having to send her money to eat, uh, money to, to for this, money for that because that famine had hit. Now when this famine hit the, the young man, he didn't call daddy. He actually uh, went and got a job. He didn't have to go get a job, his dad was rich, but he went and got a job. And look, his dad had servants that worked for him. He had hired servants that worked for him that were tending pigs. So it says in the Bible that the young, the son, the, guy, the young man went and um, he went to go work with those who were tending pigs, okay? He was even willing to eat pig food. That's how hungry he was. But they wouldn't give him none. And that's how it's been for my daughter. You know, she's been wanting food and, and she's been wanting something to eat. But how many of you know that there, there's, in this time, people don't want to give her anything. They didn't want to have to send her food. I had to send her things to help her to survive. But even... That was taking a toll on me. It was taking a toll. And I didn't have no more money to send. And there were days that she was going without eating. There was days when she didn't have no food to eat. She was going through her famine. Her prodigal moment. And so, it says that when the young man, he thought to himself, you know, what he'll tell his dad. You know, if he'll go back home, what he'll tell his dad, he'll tell his dad that, you know, dad, I done sinned against heaven and I done sinned in your eyes, God, just, I mean, uh, uh, dad, and, you know, just hire me on as a servant because I don't even deserve to be your son. This is what he told, this is what he thought to tell his dad. And, you know, I don't know what my daughter is thinking, I don't know what's going on in her mind, but... I know probably right now she's probably feeling some type of way too. Because I've been telling her you could come home at any time. But she says I'm not ready to come home. So you rather go through what you're going through. And sometimes God allows us to go through. He allows us to be in a position that we're in. And, and it's just going through. You know. But last night when I read about the prodigal son. I know that there is hope. There is hope for her. And she will come out. And so as I continue to read about the prodigal son in the Bible, it says that he decided to go home. He decided to go home, on back home to his father. And the Bible says that the father seen his son from afar off. Have you ever seen something from a distance and you'd be like, that look like my child? That is my child. And it says that the father ran and greeted his son. He, he went and greeted him, but the son said, wait a minute. I don't even deserve to be called your son because that I've sinned against you. I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. But the daddy was so happy to have his child back. It says in the Bible that he, he had him, he threw him the finest coat. And he, 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 he threw a party. He celebrated his son coming home. He told them to go and get the fattest calf because we about to celebrate. And he said, put a ring on my son's finger. And some people will probably say, why would he do that? Why would he celebrate his son who took his money and squandered it off? You know, they probably say that about my daughter too. Because, you know, you got family that will look down, siblings that will look down and say, you know, they're angry because she's, you know, she does, she's doing this and she's doing that. And, and, and in the Bible, it says his brother seeing that there was some noise going on at the house and the celebration. So he called one of his servants and asked what is going on. And they told him, they said, your, 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 your brother has returned. And the Bible says that the father said, this son here 
was dead and now he's alive. Okay? And that's how I feel about my daughter. Anytime you go back into sin or you living in sin, anytime you in sin, you walking in death. Okay? You're walking in a death zone. But the father said he, he was dead, but now he's alive. And, and then the Bible says he was lost, but now he is found. My daughter is lost, but she will be found. She may be walking among the dead, but she will live again. There is hope in Luke. There is hope in the Bible. There is hope in the prodigal son message. As I read last night and I cried and I cried because I know that there is hope for my daughter. And so uh, the, the son told the father, I, why, I work for you. I've never sinned against you, but you've never done anything like this for me. And the father looked at the son and he told the son, he said, but your brother was dead, but now he's living. He was lost and now he's found. In other words, don't be like that. And so the father was telling him, son, you've been with me always and everything I have is yours. So when, when someone, when, you're, when he was in other words, he was saying, you've been with me. I know where you at. I could see you. But this son has strayed off. But my daughter has strayed off. And I know what she's capable of doing. And I know the gifts that she have inside of us. But do not cast your children off. Do not, brothers and sisters, don't cast off your sibling. Because you don't know what they're walking through. You don't know what they're going through. They may be going through a prodigal moment. But I thank God. For the story of the prodigal son, it gave me hope. I have hope. I have hope. And I'm going to celebrate when she come on. They may not understand why she's celebrating, why she all happy. She done done all this and she done done it. But you know what? Look back at your own life and how you living and what you've been through and how you came. You know, you sometimes we got to look at ourselves. We are no perfect and no better than the next person. Okay? But anyway, I hope you understood this story. I hope you understood what I'm saying. Pray for my prodigal daughter. She's going to make it back alive. And we're going to celebrate. Amen. So I wanted to share this with you, D-Squad, because you're a family. And this is sometimes I just need to talk. I can't talk to my family because they feel some, you know, the families always feel some type of way. As if we've never made a mistake, but we have. But anyway, I thank God for her. I thank God for her return. I thank God for the celebration. And I give God the glory. And if you have a prodigal story, I need mean, you understand where I'm coming from. But I'm going to put the scripture in. Read the story about the prodigal son. I have hope. And to God be the glory. I love you, D-Squad. And until the next video, make sure you hit the thumbs up for your girl. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to go back to doing discussions because they are very much needed. God bless you guys. And I'll talk to you later. Here's your morning kiss. Say bless. Say bless. Yeah. Bless.